All right, everybody, welcome back. Brand new Sarah Frazier Show podcast. It's kind of a special edition show today because normally today I do a podcast episode about my personal life, but there has been so much breaking sister wives news that I wanted to do a special podcast episode today to address the monster lawsuit that was filed last week by Christine Brown Woolley against our guy, Cody Brown. It's huge. Tons of other details are coming out about this, including is the rumor true that TLC is frantically trying to edit because of something in this lawsuit? And did Christine Brown, I mean, the timing of Christine Brown filing this lawsuit, and if you're thinking to yourself, okay, Sarah, I'm not caught up. Christine Brown from Sister Wives filed last week a monster lawsuit, the first by any of the wives past or present, against Cody Brown for the paternity of Truly, their 14-year-old daughter. His name was never on the birth certificate because of their Mormon religion and polygamy. And she wants child support, including back child support. And there's a lot of details in this filing that we're going to get into. And what does this mean for the future of Sister Wives? Do we all need to be watching this show because the end is near? (laughs) So we're going to get into the breakdown and the fallout of the Christine Brown versus Cody Brown lawsuit that has taken place and what has now come to light. Also, was it the artwork? Was it the artwork in Cody and Robin's home that has now been seen and featured over the past couple of years? Was that the tipping point? We'll talk about that. Also, Janelle and her daughter, Maddie, as well as Maddie's husband, announced that they are launching a new project. We're going to discuss this farm that they're launching. What does it mean? What are their roles? We'll get into all that. And, uh, oh, more of maybe some theories as to why Robin and McKelty had that major falling out. So if you want to join the podcast next week, I will have more of an update. You know, people I know are following my egg donor journey. We've hit a, not really a snag. I don't think this is a snag in our egg donor journey. You know, we are going to use an egg donor to have our second child. We've been trying to conceive for two years after two miscarriages. And, you know, I seem to have these late miscarriages, like 13 weeks along. It just, it hasn't happened for us. And I'm 42. So it was time to move on to an egg donor. We've done that. We selected a donor, but two things have happened. And I'm going to get into all that next week. So I'll talk about it. And then also I'm, I've realized with my parenting style, I'm sort of like a half trainer with these kids. Like my son is half potty trained, but not fully. He won't poop on the potty and he's like three. So I'm going to need people's tips for that. And then he still uses a pacifier going on three and a half. And, but he's, he doesn't use a pacifier all day. It's just at nap time and bedtime. So I'm going to need all your advice, but that'll be next week on TSFS. All right. So let's get into this lawsuit. First of all, I have to shout out without a crystal ball. YouTuber Katie without a crystal ball is what she goes by. She is the one that initially broke this story. I was sitting in Maine. I was watching the TV. I don't even know what I was. Oh, the perfect couple on Netflix. Have you? I, I'm loving it. Halfway through. So good. Murder mystery with Nicole Kidman. And Katie's without a crystal ball. Instagram comes up and she has an exclusive that Christine Brown is suing Cody Brown from Sister Wives for the paternity. She wants a DNA test to to prove that Truly is his, which uh, of course Truly is his, but they need the DNA test because she's asking for back child support from to 2020 and then current child support. The timing on this lawsuit is major and also loops in TLC. So what, first of all, what's happening is this was filed in the state of Utah. In Utah, a couple of things. Cody Brown, if in fact a judge rules in Christine's favor, is liable for child support from four years back. What Christine did by filing this lawsuit is basically show us all and tell us all that Cody hasn't been paying child support and hasn't been paying his fair share of truly for years. For years! Christine, we know from Without a Crystal Ball's YouTube and Her investigation, Christine has been using her own health insurance to take care of Truly. So what has the old Codemeister been doing? Cody, what? Cody, what? I mean, have we been sending her lunch money? Like, where is our share? 
Three years after their split, this bombshell lawsuit is set to possibly reveal some of the Browns' rather secretive finances. Now, in the state of Utah, lots of times these injunctions are sealed. So the only way we would actually get real specifics, because, you know, people are very curious about what Cody and Robin and Christine and Janelle make. You know, what do they actually make from Sister Wives? So in Utah, if if this just goes like if Cody does not object to this uh, filing, if he goes along with it, if they get a mediator and he agrees, we probably will not know their finances. But if it is dismissed or there is an injunction, it could be unsealed and we could, in fact, find out for sure some of the money that Cody and Robin have made. The other thing that has come out since this lawsuit is that child support will mess with your mortgage. So you all know, and by the way, because I'm live on TikTok too, has anyone recently looked at the Zillow listing for Cody and Robin's home in Flagstaff on, um, what is it, Hawk to a lane? What's the lane? You know, I mean, somebody look it up. Have they reduced the price yet? Has Have they reduced the price? Has there been any developments? I need to go to Zillow and look up um, their Arizona price. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's um, Hash Knife. Sorry, not Hog Tua. You know, she's, <laughs> you know, Hog Tua is my Hog Tua girl. You know, she Hog Tua is it. Uh, no, it's still listed for 1.65. Did it increase? Did it increase? And now they've got a 3D tour. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. $9,500 a month. Who in the world? Who in the what in the world is doing that? And uh, 312,000 people have now viewed it. So it's been on the market for a hot second and they have not cut the price. But this lawsuit by Christine Brown for child, child support and paternity now means that when I would think Cody's going to have to pay, I don't know how you get out of that. I mean, I guess they could settle out of court, but still, if he has to legally pay child support, which I'm sure he will, that will impact what he is given for a mortgage on the next piece of property. Okay, you better have a heck of a lot of income. You know, I I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, I did a whole theory that I think they're very wealthy personally. But this is going to impact the mortgage that he can get. Even if they're going to build on Coyote Pass, his mortgage will be impacted. They will take the child support into consideration. Why did Christine Brown file this lawsuit like a few days after the season premiere of season 19, episode one. Was it something that she saw in episode one that tipped her off to do this? My own feeling is, I don't think it was something in the actual episode, but I do think, I personally think she's been thinking about this for a while. And I think when she saw the home being listed on Zillow, because it's been on the market now for a while, like over 30 days, I'm sure. So I think it's a combo of things. 24 days on Zillow, so 24 days on the market. I think when Christine Brown Woolley saw that house being listed for 1.65, all the money that they have contributed to that home, I think she started going, getting with her attorney and saying, okay, now's the time. The other thing that was very strategic by Christine is she filed this lawsuit when Truly is 14. In the state of Utah, when a kid is 14 years old, they have a say in what parent they want to be, they can, they want to live with. She's been living with Christine anyway, um, but truly now has a say. So my guess is he's probably going to get weekends, some summer vacation time, but Christine will be and is asking for primary custody. Did their artwork infuriate Christine in Cody and Robin's home? And was that why she filed? I, I'm... I think it was a combo of things, you guys. I Somebody on Reddit has now looked at the artwork in Cody and Robin's home and has said, if this artwork is in fact real, or let's say it's like a limited edition print, they're looking at probably $100,000 in an artwork collection alone. I don't know. I don't know anything about art. I don't know how you would be able to tell that. I mean, I look at it and I think, oh, Lord. This is like a modern day Thomas Kincaid, honey. I mean, oof, oof, you know, gives me the willies. I don't, you know what I mean? It's always like a couple out on a rock or, you know, it's some modern thing where the half the couple's face is like sliding down. No, thanks, darling. I don't want to wake up to that. Have you gone to people? Some people's got artwork in their house. I don't know. It's scary as hell. Like a giant face with these big eyeballs coming at you. I don't want to wake up to that every day. No, thanks. Like, give me a gorgeous photograph of Italy coast or something. You know what I mean? But anyhow, I don't know. It's like Salvador Dali in that place. And a whole bunch of things is melting into a river and an ocean and an eyeball pass. 
but people say that it's worth 100K. I think Christine Brown is well aware of how much money they are set to make on their Flagstaff home because Flagstaff, Arizona is a hot place to live. And I think the assets they have in Coyote Pass, she knows he has money and he hasn't paid up. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. If it really comes out, because we haven't heard from this couple, we haven't heard anything from him. He hasn't responded through an attorney or anything. I've actually, I've actually been pretty quite fair on my show to Cody and Robin because I've been in entertainment a long time. I know that these individuals on reality shows, unless you're Chris Jenner, have no say in how they're edited. Lisa Vanderpump now does too. But short of that, you know, they want a villain in all of these shows, right? Secret Lives of Mormon Wives, Whitney. So Cody and Robin are perfect villains, right? They're being edited to some degree to, to always play the victim. So I've always had a little empathy for them because they're great to keep showing up, telling their story, even though I know that they do things that people really hate. And I don't ever hate anybody on reality TV. I don't. We don't really know them. Um, without them being the villain or being beloved, you don't have a show. So I think they play a pivotal role. But I'll say this. If it comes out that he truly hasn't paid a penny in three years since Christine, he and Christine have separated. I I know he's a deadbeat. I will really, I mean, for the amount of money they have made, if he hasn't paid one dime to Truly, then I'm going to say that that's a real piece of shit move. I really will. I will not hold back. And I've been very nice. And I, and I actually, and I, I say this, I would have Cody and Robin on my podcast in a heartbeat. Absolutely. I always, when people do long form interviews, they're at least allowed to tell their story and then you can decide further, right? So I will be very upset if that, in fact, comes out to be true. So uh, to answer this long-winded ass question, <laughs> you're like, okay, Sarah, get to it. What do you think prompted this lawsuit and why? I think that I, I think the timing is strategic for a couple of reasons. One, truly 14. Two, I do think that Christine saw the listing of this Zillow home at 1.6 and was like, oh, uh-uh. I have worked just as hard as these other women's, these other women's, these other women, truly is getting her share. He's going to contribute if he stands to make one point, even 1.4 million, because they paid something like 800,000 for their home in Flagstaff a few years ago. I mean, I think that was it. I think the artwork contributed. Cody, uh, truly's age contributed. She wants back child support. That clearly states right there he didn't pay. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Again, that's her stories in his, in his. He may have paid something. Maybe she didn't feel like it was enough. So he could have paid something. Um, the other, so that's the timing of it. And I think she knows, right? There's a lot of eyeballs on season 19. This is one of the highest watched reality shows. So I think she wanted to do it because if he is in fact a deadbeat dad, now the whole world's going to know. The other thing too is, and I, this is why I have no I do not know this to be true, but I've been in entertainment a long time. There has been for years a real rumor that Christine and Mary and Janelle could get their own spinoff. What this lawsuit did was essentially say that Cody cannot, Cody and Janelle and Christine, excuse me, cannot talk shit about each other publicly, privately. They have to be all cordial. So two things are probably happening. One, TLC is probably reviewing the rest of season 19. Is there anything legally that could get Cody in trouble, Christine in trouble, or drag TLC into the mess? Are they thinking about maybe making some tweaks and edits to season 20? Because we know season 20 has already been filmed. I think yes. And then did Christine do this because Cody is muzzled now? They can't, he cannot say negative things about her. So is, is this kind of Christine's strategic way of like, okay, TLC, you want to continue with the show? Well, Mary, Janelle, and I are getting a spinoff. We're going to get huge paydays. I mean, enormous paydays. And uh, let's go. I mean, I kind of feel like, like this is really genius the way that she has done this. Very very genius. I also think now she is financially in a better position than she's ever been in her life. David Woolley, you know, is a well-known contractor in Utah. I think he makes probably really good money. So I think she has his backing. I think her MLM, the Plexus T, is doing well, whether you love it or hate it. And she's probably making a boatload of money 
from the show, the T, the MLM, and now with David. So David's probably like, let's go all in. What a lawsuit. Is this lawsuit also going to open up the floodgates for Mary and Janelle to sue Cody as well? I do think that depending on how this goes, and I don't know, my gut says a little bit, unless Janelle has already been bought out of Coyote Pass, and we're going to see that in the upcoming seasons, which could be the case because Mary Brown came on my show and would not speak of Coyote Pass because she basically said there hasn't been a resolution, alluding to the fact you can go listen to this full Mary Brown interview on on the podcast. But she basically alluded to the fact she can't speak on business on Coyote Pass because it hasn't been resolved. Part of me thinks Janelle has already been bought out. And maybe Mary is in the works. So Cody and Robin own the entire thing and the women are out. That's kind of what I think, but I don't know that to be true. And, you know, we'll, we'll see, but all his assets are going to be taken into consideration, honey. Honey, surely going to be getting 8K a month, girl. Get that, get those coins. Is child support high in Utah? You know, I'm on, I'm live on TikTok as well. In Utah, are they like a, um, you know, because sometimes child support can be like, it is based on your income and your assets. But, you know, sometimes child support can be $300. I mean, it's hard to raise a kid in any state now on $300. So is Utah, is Utah like, hmm, she going to get her coins? Like truly could be getting 8K a month. Let's look at some of the comments, by the way, by the way, by the way. Okay. Someone said, I haven't watched Sister Wives in years. Oh my God, get on board because season 19 is so good. Episode two aired last night. If you want the full recap, it's here on the Sarah Fraser show. Um, so you can catch that. And I do recaps every single Monday of the episodes. Uh, Ashley says that Cody has said he, the one thing is he is scared of is poverty. He's going to be headed that way if these women have their way. It could be. It could be. And, you know, he also famously threatened Christine. He said, if Christine sues me, the only person that's going to win are the lawyers. And what did you mean by that, sir? Sir, sir, what did you mean by that? Are you about to lawyer up? Uh, someone said, Christine is going in. Good for her. He's such a narcissist. Uh, any social media deals she has too, she's been making money on. Good for the women. He's a narcissist. Always played the victim. I absolutely love Christine. Who would have thought she was this much of a genius? Well, I'm sure David Woolley helped too, but she's probably a genius. Don't want to take anything away from her. Let's hope Robin doesn't get a dime either. Robin's going to get plenty of money and Robin gets paid for the show too. Robin said last night about her McMansion being an asset for everyone. Oh, oh. I know. The women are going to get a payout. The women are going to get a payout. Now, this is the thing I almost kind of want a Utah lawyer on that knows Mormonism because are they going to get a payout? They weren't legally married. So are, even though, and we found out last night that none of the women's names are on the deed of that house and they didn't demand it. They didn't walk out the door. That, honey, you don't put my name on the deed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. My name's on the car, the credit card. I mean, I guess, you know, you got to make sure the man's good with money or the woman, but- the uh, uh, uh the the day my name wasn't on that deed the only, I mean Mary now of course you know she's got like a legacy family you know business but Mary's doing Mary's doing well they own a lot of property Mary does in and around Lizzie's heritage so okay um what else a lot of people have said and speculated will Robin now leave Cody over this lawsuit I highly doubt it. It seems like, at least from these clips that TLC is putting out, where it's like, get to know the sister wives, that Cody and Robin are more in love than ever. But I don't know. Reality TV does have a way of absolutely destroying marriages. Cody and Christine also have to attend parenting classes with this injunction. So they're going to be doing parenting class uh, classics, classes, sorry. Uh, and what else? That's where we're at with that. So this lawsuit is enormous, enormous. And will it open the floodgates for other women? And is it sort of a, I don't know, is it a strategic move to get the women? Because isn't that the ultimate revenge? If Christine, Janelle, and Mary went on to have a reality show. Woo! Woo! Because we know Cody loves him some Cody. 
Okay, let's talk about uh, other speculation as to why Robin and McKelty have had a fallout with Tony as well in the feud. Some sources are leaking on online chat boards that Robin had a meltdown at Garrison Brown's funeral, uh, made it about herself and her family. And that is why McKelty and Tony are on the outs right now with Cody and Robin. However, a source that appeared on Reddit says that McKelty and Tony are struggling with this decision because if you all remember, Robin Brown was the first person to support McKelty being with Tony because they were just 19 years old when they got together. So we'll see what's coming out more on McKelty and Tony's Patreon if they address it anymore. They said that they wouldn't, but some people are saying they're having second thoughts as they feel a great bit of loyalty to Robin. Yesterday, Janelle announced that she and her daughter, Maddie, have filed a business license in North Carolina and are opening up a flower business. I got to tell you, oh, I got to tell you, I think this is a good, wise idea. Are they becoming like Magnolia Farms, like Chip and Joanna Gaines? I, I think we are just beginning to see the warm up and the startup of these sister wives. I think they're coming for Chip and Joanna Gaines. You know, Chip and Joanna Gaines in uh, down there in Texas. Oh, my God. Where is it? Waco. I want to go to Waco. Whoever wanted to go to Waco? I want to go down to Waco for those mag Magnolia. You know, what are those giant silos they have? What do they put in there? Storage? Or is there corn? I don't know. Whatever it is. I want to go down to those damn silos. I think Janelle and Caleb, her son-in-law, and Maddie are coming for Chip and Joanna Gaines. Look out, baby. We're going to do home renovation. We're going to grow flowers. You can come down, pick your own flowers. The Sun exclusively revealed just this morning that Janelle has filed a business license for Tada Farms. That's how you say it, Tada. I didn't even know how, like, I think it's spelled T-A-E-D-A. -E and someone said, I don't know if it's Latin for, I don't know, torching love and great peace, whatever it means, you know. Anyway, they phonetically spelled it out for us. So Tada is how you pronounce it. In North Carolina, the business license has been filed in Raleigh. They purchased 156 acres for $289,000. Now, y'all have come through so much on their damn website because Tata Farms is their website. They're, they're on Instagram. You can follow through Janelle. Oh, they named for the trees that grow there. Oh, Tata is, oh, thank you. Oh, my God. Okay, thank, thank God somebody knows. <laughs> I'm like, Tata, you know, Tata, it's Latin for uh, torch and things and uh, how about you're way off, Sarah? Okay, <laughs> it's, it's named for the trees in North Carolina. All right, well, tomato, tomato. We get like a lot of things right here on the show. Do we get everything? No, okay, we don't get everything. Sorry, I think I'm partially dyslexic, undiagnosed. Like things are hard for me to retain, even written down. So $289,000 is what Janelle paid for it. Now, we're also, according to the sun, Janelle is going to be the farm, the flower smeller, the grass grower and flower whisperer. So Janelle famously loves gardening. I'm sure she's going to be selecting flowers. Madison is the project executive. So it sounds like she's going to be running the business. And then Caleb is going to be handling, sounds like day-to-day, -day, maintenance, all of that. Mm. Okay. And you also probably saw, and oh, by the way, so many people turned out to support Tada farms the website crashed they're out of merch already within like a few hours nuts this is why i'm telling you very brilliant idea fans want a way to come see them now they're going to be able to go to north carolina much like they do waco texas it's a destination i think this is a genius idea there's so much money in landscaping i mean it's a pain in the ass do i want to be down tilling soil and go into people's houses and you know Growing geraniums in their back deck? No. And I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, what do you like to do, Sarah? I was actually thinking this too, because I don't like to cook. I do want a garden. I do, but I don't want to make, I don't like want to, I want like three rose bushes. I don't want to maintain this shit. They're always getting bugs on them and weeds. <sighs> I got to find some hobbies aside from podcasting. Anyhow, <laughs> so, I'm thinking to myself, Tay Da, ah, more like Tay Nightmare. I mean, I don't want to be down there in the soil trying to get a bunch of flowers. Oh. Flowers are a pain in the ass. And you you build, you know, you grow them all and then the deer come and eat them. Then you got to shoot the deer. You know? <laughs> anyway, I'm sure it'll be awesome. I do love a mom. You know, I love a mom at Halloween time. 
The other thing, okay, we'll shift gears a bit. This is sort of sad and seems very final and I'm sure very final for the family, but Janelle listed Garrison Brown's condo in Flagstaff just last week as well. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. We know Garrison took his own life the spring of 2024 and Janelle talked to People Magazine. She gave an interview. She said she had no idea. No, it never crossed her mind. I'm sure like so many parents and siblings when that happens, it's horrendous. No, had no idea her son was at a place where he could take his own life. But last week she did list the condo. Garrison purchased it for $321,000. It's listed for four twenty five dollars in Flagstaff. Mm. Very, very sad. But Janelle has moved on to North Carolina and the home there, well, they haven't built a home there yet at Tada. So I don't know if they're going to be building a house or if it's going to be solely commercial, but they fired that, they have filed that business license. Okay. Oh, we have good tea. We have good tea. This lawsuit is everything because boy, a lot of stuff. Get ready. Last night's episode I thought was great, but I think all the dirt coming out of Sister Wives is going to be even better. So uh, tomorrow on the show, TLC Talk, you know, I always recap the biggest gossip in the TLC world, you know, I'm obsessed with Thousand Pound Sisters and Before the 90 Days, and I Love a Mama's Boy is coming back. But why is only one of the I Love a Mama's Boy mama-son duos coming back from past seasons? Why did it take almost two years for this show to come back? Thousand Pound Sisters, are we going to see Amy Slayton's arrest when that show comes back in October? We got a ton of tea to get to. So be subscribing to the Sarah Fraser Show podcast everywhere you get your pods. Love you guys. Oh my God, isn't it just fun to have escapism and we get to like talk about other people's, you know, we get to dish a little bit. We're not like mean gossip. You know, we don't wish anyone ill will. Everybody's making a lot of money from this. Let's have fun. Let's dish a little tea. Let's escape for a little bit. I mean, come to the podcast. Anyhow. Okay, bye everybody. Bye.